Hey everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. I am Alan and today we're talking about Polaroids. No, we are not talking about those horrid square photographs that were squirted out of the underbelly of a cheap plastic camera back in the 1940s and then developed in front of you only to begin fading right away. <laughs> Wrong kind of Polaroids. The kind of Polaroids I'm talking about today are um, a set of photographs that a model will submit to an advertising agency uh, in hopes of getting a job. It's kind of like a model's calling card. And the expectation, I think, from most agencies is that the model will do these photographs themselves or have a friend do it. Uh, but uh, in this competitive world today, a lot of models will, uh, will stick to the rules of the Polaroids, but they'll get a friend who's a photographer to shoot them uh, so that at least they are in good focus and that the lighting is good. Um, so they look like very high quality amateur photographs. There are some really strict expectations about what a set of Polaroids is going to look like. It consists of usually six photographs, a, uh, a, a set of three headshots, and I'll talk about them in a second, and then three full body shots minus the feet. I'll explain that as well. Uh, but there are some um, responsibilities that the model has to, to take care of for a shoot like this. And there are some things that you need to be aware of. If you have a camera and you have family or friends, there's a good chance that one day somebody is going to ask you if you can help them shoot a set of Polaroids. And this should help you do that. The first thing, let's talk about what the model needs to do. Uh, the model cannot be wearing any makeup of any kind, whether it's to cover a blemish or cover a scar. No makeup. When a modeling agency looks at Polaroids, they want to see the real person without anything being covered up, without anything uh, being altered. They know what they're going to be able to alter. They'll look at a plain photograph of somebody and they'll they'll know exactly what they can and cannot do with that model. But if the model has been in any way changed from the way she really appears, first of all, the agency will know it. And they'll probably throw the photographs away. Uh, but second, they would have no real idea of what they were working with. So that's key. Um, I was called this last weekend by a friend who is a model whose Polaroids are out of date. She's not comfortable doing the photography herself. I understand that. And she asked me if I could help her do so. So the first thing you need to tell somebody who's going to come to your studio space to get Polaroid shot is on the day of the shoot, they must have a clean washed face with no makeup whatsoever. Um, that includes the eyelash stuff. It's got a name. I don't know what it is. Uh, the, the stuff you put around your eye holes. I don't know what that is either. No lipstick, nothing. That's the best way. Clean teeth, double check that there's nothing green and organic hanging out between a couple of teeth because you're not going to be able to fix it in post. They will know if you manipulate this photograph. So the photographs that they're getting are straight out of camera. Uh, hair needs to be up either in a bun or in a ponytail or like this. It works for me. <laughs> Anyhow, the options for clothing are pretty limited. Most of the people who might ask you to do this are going to be uh, ladies. Um, and 
the agency is going to want to see as much as they're going to want to see. And if they can't see it, and if they can't evaluate it from the Polaroids, then they're probably not going to give you a second look. So generally speaking, it's one of three things that that I'll recommend. Either a matching two-piece bathing suit in some color that's not screaming uh, in the picture, uh, or a, a conservative pair uh, a set of uh, underwear bra and panties in the same matching color nothing nothing that's going to distract uh, from the the agency's evaluation of the body uh, for some people they do not want to do that um, and that is absolutely fine or it might not be necessary for the kind of work they're going uh, going to go for that was the way it was with the shoot we did this weekend uh, the model wanted to uh, wear a skin tight t-shirt and a pair of exercise pants short shorts that uh, were skin tight which is absolutely fine uh, that that will often suffice what you need to avoid is any clothing that that's baggy has a lot of excess material and hangs down in ways that cover um, uh, important body parts. Because the agency's just not going to look twice a photograph where they can't evaluate what you look like. So that is what the model needs to take care of. The photographer needs to take care of the following things. Uh, the first is the light, and this is critical. This is where you can really help the model more than anything else. because the, the unsuccessful homemade Polaroids that I've seen, most always the issue is either light or focus. So it's best, I think, to do it in a, a, a naturally lit environment, like a studio with windows or a, a room with decent sun exposure, but go for as much reflected light as you can. If you're doing it outside, try to find a place out of the direct sun but still well lit. As far as the background goes, I recommend using a neutral, non-distracting background, whether that is a, a wall uh, or a piece of fabric like this uh, completely untreated uh, painter's uh, drop cloth, which I think gives a lovely neutral background, not distracting. In the perfect world, you'd use a mid-gray background, but not many people are going to have a gray background sitting around to use. So if you're going to use a wall, avoid a wall with wallpaper, um, unless the wallpaper is <laughs> mid-gray, which I don't think would sell very well, uh, and avoid pure white backgrounds, especially if it's a bright day. Uh, that can be distracting, and it can also give you some some uh, blown highlights in the in the photograph. So go with something well illuminated but neutral. So let's talk about the actual photographs. Now uh, I was given permission by the model to use these photographs to demonstrate this process, um, and I promised her if I showed the Polaroids, I would also show some of the other shots we took a little bit later in the day, and I will. So before you press the shutter button, you need to, to be aware of a few things that the agencies are going to expect in these photographs. First, they all need to be shot uh, in portrait up and down. Uh, you may not crop them, and you may not do any retouching. These have to be uh, straight out of the camera. Now, because you can't retouch, it's a good idea for Polaroids uh, to shoot these photographs as JPEGs as opposed to RAW files. RAW files are very unflattering, um, as unflattering as you can get. At least the JPEG will give you some uh, some livelier colors. So that, that would be worth thinking about. Think about all this stuff before you take the pictures, because if you find that you, you've chopped a body part off and you, you need to, or need to do some aggressive cropping in post, you're not allowed to do that. And you'll have to end up shooting the photograph again. 
I would strongly recommend that if you're going to be taking a photograph of a model, even if it's just for a set of Polaroids, that you get a standard model release signed just so that uh, you're, you're sure of what permissions you have and what permissions the model has for the use of these, these photographs, just so it doesn't create a problem down the road. Uh, I usually invite uh, my female models, at least, to bring a, a, a partner or a friend or a, a spouse to the shoot. It makes them usually more comfortable, and it certainly does me. Uh, and for anybody who is under the age of consent, uh, I insist on proof of age, and uh, I need to have an adult a parent or guardian, legal guardian, present for the shoot. That's just common sense. So think about that. What do you need to do? What do you need to photograph? I said that there were three headshots and there were three full body shots. I recommend shooting uh, with indirect light wherever you can find it in your studio space. Uh, reflected light is awesome. It's nice and soft and flattering if you have a part of your, your studio that that would work for. I also recommend shooting from a tripod. Um, that is important to get consistency in the perspective of the photographs, the photographs not moving up and down. In this case, from, uh, from the shoot this weekend, my model was considerably taller than me. <laughs> A, a lot taller than me, uh, and it was it was absolutely necessary that I had a, a tripod that was able to maintain that same uh, perspective for all the shots. There are three headshots that you need. The first one needs to be a full frontal headshot with no smile, no expression whatsoever, just looking straight ahead at the camera, and you need to frame it so that the model's head takes up about three quarters of the frame. That will usually bring the, the lower edge of the frame to just above the décolletage, I think it's called, to just above the head. And the second photograph is exactly the same, only with a nice big toothy smile, otherwise exactly the same as the first headshot. The third headshot needs to be a true profile. By true profile, I mean the model needs to turn 90 degrees to the camera, usually towards the, the light is better, and make sure that their toes are pointed in that direction, not, not that the shoulders are turned. You'll find it very helpful to shoot tethered in a situation like this, but if you're not set up to shoot tethered, just be sure to, to magnify the image on your camera and take a good look to make sure that you don't have stray hairs wandering across eyeballs or uh, uh, vegetable matter in teeth. So once you've done the three headshots, the next step is getting the full body shots. And these are dead simple. So for the first body shot, this is a full frontal standing up with the, the shoulders straight, the arms relaxed by the side, the feet a few inches apart, but not way far apart, with the model looking straight ahead and nothing else. That's all you need to get. Uh, when that's done, have the model turn 90 degrees again for a true profile. So make sure that her feet are still a, a little bit apart, arms relaxed at the side and facing at 90 degrees. The third shot is of the back of your model. She needs to turn away from the camera, but otherwise the identical pose to the first two. So when the shoot's over, I will provide the model with uh, electronic copies of the six photographs. The, I will pick the, the best six of however many we took, and I will give those photographs uh, as individual JPEG files. Now, occasionally a model will ask me to organize them in a particular way. 
One of the more common ways I've been asked to, to help a model put the pictures together is as the three headshots on one page with the page oriented to landscape. I don't have any problem doing this arranging of the photographs for a friend if they ask me to do it. Uh, just resist the urge to retouch the photographs at all. They will know if you retouch the photographs and you're not doing the model any favors by doing so. So they are the basic things you need to remember if you're asked to shoot a set of Polaroids for a family member or a friend. It doesn't take very long to do. Once you've done it once or twice, it, it, it will be very routine and very simple. Occasionally, if a model asks me to help them with Polaroids, I will ask if I can have them sit for me for a few minutes and let me take some pictures for my portfolio. And uh, Nicole was very kind to do this uh, for me uh, this weekend. striking young lady and uh, I wish her all the best in her modeling career. Thanks for watching. If any of this was helpful, please give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, you really should think about doing it. I would love to have you. And seeing as I am now officially socially distancing myself from everybody as usual, <laughs> I'll have plenty of time over the next couple of weeks, I presume to uh, put together videos so if there's anything you want to see let me know what it is otherwise you'll just have to wait and see what I come up with we've got extreme macro and another compositing video coming up this week so thanks for joining me have a good day stay out of trouble take lots of pictures farewell mm -hmm.